So, Season 3 is on the horizon, and we have system changes and character changes. I'll go over these in an informal manner and talk about some of the implications of these changes in regards to Batman. Let's begin. Let's start with Wild Assault. This is a new move introduced in Season 3 that uses 50% of your burst for a forward moving attack. Batman has the white one, which has inborn at the later part of the attack, but Batman cannot cancel out of it. He can only cancel into Wild Assault from a special cancelable normal. Batman's Wild Assault is very plus on block, allowing him to frame trap or block string after it. Batman has many uses for his Wild Assault. For one, it's a good combo or pressure component to ensure your opponent does not burst. Wild Assault drains your opponent's burst on hit or block, so if you want burst to not be a factor for your combo or pressure, you can integrate it into the sequence. Batman's block strings are unique because he has an objective with them at times, which is to get his errors to auto-fire. Wild Assault allows Batman to brute force his strings to be difficult to contest, which comes in very handy for error looping, especially off of normals with limited Gatling options like 2P or 2K2D. As mentioned earlier, Wild Assault can be added to combos to make it unburstable. For example, off of throw, you can fast RC backwards and charge Wild Assault to create a burst tape combo. Off of 6H, you can add it in as well. Hitting regular Wild Assault will send the opponent flying away with a hard knockdown, but charging it will make it slower obviously, but the launch is high enough to allow Close Slash or 5k to connect. Once counter hit confirms or errors are taken into account, there's a lot of opportunities to integrate Wild Assault into your confirms. As for neutral games and defensive applications of Wild Assault, I found it pretty beneficial to sometimes use Wild Assault after wall breaks where you have an error stored. The round star situation that you find yourself after wall break is generally not too great and it's way too easy to lose your error. You can do something like far slash into Wild Assault and block shoot from there to maintain your momentum. The invuln of Wild Assault allows it to use it as a callout at times, but you have to be pretty sure of what you call out. Having it whip is one thing, but if you're hit during the startup, you eat a counter hit and you lose 50% of your burst, and that's a very bad loss. Overall, you really want to integrate Wild Assault into your game plan because the white one is really good. The goal is to use Wild Assault to try to make your turns matter more and try to transform those turns into wall breaks where the positive bonus will now refund a lot of your burst back. Deflect Shield So Deflect Shield essentially works like a brief parry state that blocks both highs and lows and also pushes your opponent on successful parry. Batman's other defensive options are far better in this patch so he doesn't really have to bank on Deflect Shield to protect them. If you allow the specific situation where Deflect Shield is guaranteed and can issue a punish, then it may be a decent tool in your repertoire, but I feel like the burst meter is better spent on Wild Assault. On offense, Batman is particularly good at dealing with Deflect Shield given the nature of his strings moving him back, his long normals, and also his errors covering for him. I've had situations where my opponent Deflect Shield my close slash just to get hit by the 2S that I get link afterwards. Weights being universal. So Batman's ability to combo on heavier opponents was very limited in both in his ground and air confirms. This change makes it so that every character has a similar weight class to Soul, and overall this is pretty big for Batman. 2k into 2d into spin is far more consistent now at most distances. Batman's air to air confirms like JS confirms are far less arbitrary based on who you're fighting. This also kind of circles around and nerfs Batman a little bit because he was also in the heavier weight class, so being normal weight now makes him subjugated to being hit by harder combos and stronger setups. Those are mostly the big ones in terms of system mechanics. I'm going to go into Batman's specific changes for Season 3. I'm going to ignore the bug fixes specifically because I don't really have anything valuable to contribute to those other than, yay, cool, it's fixed now. So, yeah, let's begin. Starting with number 1, Batman's air dash begins more quickly. This is perhaps one of Batman's most impactful changes as it affects nearly every facet of his gameplay. It affects his neutral, save jumps, combos, confirms, pressure, and my mental health. So the main change is that Batman can spend less time in a hover state, resulting in being able to air dash sooner and attack sooner out of that air dash. This makes a lot of his air pokes faster. Downwards air dash JS is faster, forward air dash JS air to air is faster, backwards air dash JH to retreat is faster, you get the idea. Remember that Batman is only technically punishable in his hover state, so spending less time in it makes his air dash movement less committal overall. For combos, this makes his air dash routes in the corner a lot more consistent while also opening up some new ones. But more impactfully, it makes his ability to confirm air to air hits a lot better as well. There are a lot of times where JS air to airs don't lead to much damage due to the staggered air dash being too late afterwards. The faster air dash speed can allow Batman to more reliably grab a confirm from those stray hits if the player recognizes the situation to do so. The weight adjustments also makes these air to air confirms a lot more universal. For pressure, the faster air dash makes things harder to call out. 5k into air dash down forward JP or JK is very fast now, and it's a great way to extend your air block string if they try to faultless defend you out. The air dash that comes after JD feels very fast now, making the JK JD double overhead string fairly strong. Overall, there's a lot more versatility for air pressure that feels less like a gimmick. 
So with the faster air dash, Batman does have to adjust his current save jumps off of spin and close slash OTG. Off of low hitting spins near the corner, normal jump, air dash down forward, JK is the way to go. This beats all three options of wake up 6P, wake up 3 frame normals, and 8 frame reversals. With higher spin altitudes, it's possible to do the safe jump too quickly. You have to manually time the safe jump by waiting just a little bit, or try to delay the spin a little bit to get a lower altitude hit. If you trust your execution, off of high hitting spins, you have enough time to safe jump with forward air dash, FD break, JK. This should still be all three options of 6P, 3 frame normals, and 8 frame reversals, but your air dash and FD break have to be very fast at risk of spending too much time in the air and ruining the safe jump. If you can do this reliably, it opens up more options for mid screen spin knockdowns and when you break the wall with super and wild assault. Off of OTG close slash, a super jump air dash 4 J8 should cover most options while being a fairly fast high low, but there's a little bit of delay that you have to manually incorporate. If you're in the corner though, you have the laughably easiest save jump of all times by just doing a forward jump off of close slash and coming down with JH. 2P has increased attack level and increased recovery. By itself, this change doesn't mean much. More hits done on 2P and more blocks done on 2P isn't actually as big of a deal as it seems, but it's an accessory to another change to complete the full picture, and that change is the buff to spin, so let me just jump forward a bit and cover that change right now. Spin has less startup and less knockback. When you combine more hits done of 2P with a faster spin startup, you have 2P confirms, and this is big. Batman practically had no meterless 2P confirm unless you're a freak and could reliably confirm 2P into 6P at point blank and spin on lighter or normal sized characters in season 2. However, I'm very normal, so I appreciate having more accessible old man hit confirms like 2P, 2P into spin. Maybe even 2P, 2P, 2P into spin because I'm that fucking decrepit. This also means that Batman has a consistent and reasonable 5 frame punish now. One thing that is 5 frame punishable is Bridges Roger Dive and that's actually all I know. Spin being faster also applies to the air version, and combined with the weight changes again, JP confirms into spin should be far more consistent this time around. Spin also has less knockback now. A big problem with Season 2 Batman is that mid screen spin ender sends the opponent flying far away, and you can't take proper advantage of the plus frames that you have from the soft knockdown. This requires you to commit to a janky read if you want to retain your momentum. The less pushback should greatly improve the situation, and Batman can better utilize the chain explosion error that he created from spin. 6P has an expanded upper hitbox. Season 2 Batman 6P was a pretty bad move overall and was only usable by virtue of being a 6P in Guilty Gear's drive. When I read the patch notes, I wasn't sure how good this would be. I thought, okay, they're adding more vertical range to it. Will that even help? I did not know that they were adding an entire sunroof to Batman 6P. This hitbox change recontextualizes the move entirely. Not only does it hit reasonably high above him now, but it also protects him from cross-ups. This is very reminiscent to his Revelator 6P, which covers both sides. 6P should be used quite often now to call out any air approaches, but do note that 6P still has quite a bit of recovery, and 5P still yields better reward overall. 2K has less startup. 2K is 7 frames in Season 2, so I'm going to assume that it's 6 frames in this season. 1 frame difference. Woo. Yay. But hold up a minute. A 6 frame 2K is actually a very big deal. Game changer even. This means that 2K now punishes forward Mega Fist, Bridget Break, Leo Urs, and Chip's second Rekka if he doesn't cancel to the third, that is. Also, be one frame faster can mean the difference between a trade and getting a clean hit. Also, remember that the weight changes again make 2K 2D into spin a lot more consistent now, so overall, this is a very welcome change. Far Slash has a tumble effect when it hits airborne opponents. Season 2 Far Slash had a very annoying issue, where if it hit airborne opponents, they just dropped to the ground. This made it so that if you confirmed Far S in the 2H, but did not recognize that they were airborne, you could find yourself in a situation where your 2H whiffed and became even punishable. The new Far S property doesn't exactly resolve all of Batman's original issues with this move, but it does make most situations far better. The first thing is that air hit Far S is dramatically more plus on hit now due to the nature of the tumble state. This could allow for needle or errors to connect where it shouldn't have before. The second is that air hit Far S into 2H isn't that terrible anymore. At some ranges, you could still pick up with 2H. Further away, the 2H may whiff, but it won't be punishable. The third is that for combos, routing into far S on accident will not just outright ruin your combo anymore because 5H always works now. 5H has an expanded upper hitbox. The Season 2 version of 5H had a very limited vertical range that made it so that Batman players had to heavily delay their 5H from their close slash to work in combos. I probably will still do this out of sheer habit. The more impactful implication of this change is that it can better trap people if they try to jump out of Batman's block strings. 
Potemkin could originally jump out with back mega fist if you ever delayed 5H after 2S, but now he can actually get counter hit with the right timing. 6H has increased wall break value. So this is our first nerf and it comes from a move that isn't really that great to begin with. 6H is mostly a reaction check to see if your opponent either knows the matchup and knows that Batman has this move to begin with, or if they had their morning coffee yet, or if they're younger than 50 years old. 6H rarely hits people unless you obscure it with visual noise. It does have a lot of block stun, so you can still route into specials or errors with varying degrees of success, but for the most part, this move shouldn't be the cornerstone of your offense. Throw it out once or twice maybe in the set, but otherwise do not crush on it. You can still rely on the long startup of 6H to sneak in a PRC 2K 2D and bamboozle your opponent as a result. 2H has increased attack level on the final hit. 2H in Season 2 was attack level 2 throughout the entirety of the attack. This means that it had 13 frames of block stun consistently. The final attack has been raised to level 3 now. This means that it has 16 frames of block stun, along with having slightly more pushback and building up a little bit more risk. While the changes seem pretty small individually, it changes a lot of the dynamics involving this button, especially on block. The larger amount of block stun allows spin to be a true block string now. This is useful if your intention is just to force your turn with RC while loading up an error. If you want the old behavior where you can frame trap with spin, you simply just have to delay your special cancel. 2H in the chain explosion cache unfortunately still trades with 6 frame lows. The larger block stun also allows 2H in a needle to be fairly tight. A reversal input is difficult, especially given how they have to block 2H. 6P also does not work to check the needle after the final hit of 2H. Speaking of Needle, the startup of it is 16 frames, which aligns with the block stun of 2H, but it is not a true strain because of the pushback of the final hit of 2H. This means that the Needle hits later and becomes more safe as a result. Final hit 2H into Needle is negative 9 on block as opposed to it being in negative 11 at point blank. Do note that this is with the current pushback in mind. If your opponent IBs the Needle, the situation can quickly become very bad. For this reason, it's still my recommendation that you avoid routing into 2H outside of hit confirms and error block strings. If you find yourself going into 2H, you can mix it up by faking them out with the error reset or doing malfunction early in 2H when they're expecting the rest of the hits, frame trapping them with spin or making yourself safe with meter or going into wild assault. You do have options off of 2H, but the plays tend to be pretty janky and gimmicky while the good options are gated by resources. Errors are retained now after area shifts. When Batman breaks the wall and he has an error stored, the error will carry on to the next area. The timer of the error completely resets on wall break. This change is very big, but it requires a lot of awareness to properly utilize. In situations where you wall break with soft knockdowns, the error won't help you too much in a neutral game due to how long it takes to come out. Instead, think of the stored error as a bonus. If you win the interaction after the wall break, the error can make the reward even bigger. For hard knockdowns, retention of errors become far stronger since your turn is still guaranteed. This change also synergizes very well with Batman's install super, where if you activate the install during the combo and then break the wall while holding an error, you essentially have the equivalent of a gun while your opponent is still stuck on rock, paper, scissors. There are even some combo routes where you can activate install and break the wall with a chain explosion while preparing another error. That becomes a lot of value for just 50 meter. It should be noticed that Wild Assault can also create a hard knockdown situation, so if you find yourself wanting to retain your meter, this is a very good way to do so. This change requires considerable labbing to fully utilize, but with the right conditions, it's a very powerful change. Also, for the sake of comprehension, I should mention that Charge Dust also retains errors, but the scenarios where this becomes useful are pretty few. There could be a situation where this is actually valuable, but I think it's mostly reserved for meme combos or setups. Air Needle reduces less tension pulse. So there's a rabbit hole of a discussion in regards to tension pulse that becomes very complicated, so I'm not going to go about it in this video. Just know that in Season 2, Air Needle has a heavy tension pulse tax. Do a few of them and suddenly you're about to hit negative penalty and the game will take away your meter if you continue this. Now never mind the fact that Happy Chaos could just like shit you 10 times full screen while throwing 3 pointers with his homies, doing 3 Air Needles is apparently way too strong in comparison to all that. So, yeah, this is a very welcome change because Air Needle is a very important part of Batman's repertoire and being punished for doing it more than twice made no sense. You still want to be mindful of your meter gain when doing Air Needle, but if you need to stall in the air and check your opponent from afar while also retreating, Air Needle is just a tool for that. Lastly, the final change. Booger Super has its hitbox increased, but the damage is reduced. The hitbox improvements on the Super is greatly appreciated to making getting a wall break easier in some wall splat scenarios. It also helps when you YOLO throw it out at times. 
The damage reduction of the super is part of a sweeping change in this game to reduce damage. They should probably just remove Gold Lewis if they actually truly wanted to remove damage. But that's just me being a hater. Conclusion Bedman in Season 2 of his launch was a very interesting character that took a lot of what made him fun in Exert without much consideration of what he actually needed to be a functional character in Strive. There were just way too many issues with him that became very apparent with certain matchups. Season 3 addresses a lot of this with his character specific changes and the system mechanics also help him a lot more. The goal was never to have Batman to be some kind of top tier character, and let's face it, if you played Batman in Season 2 or even Batman in Exert Rev 2, character strength was probably not the priority to begin with. The important takeaway is that these changes make Batman far less frustrating to play. More reliable anti-airs, far slash in the 2H not being a potential death sentence on air hits, air needle not giving negative penalty after 3 shots, and having a proper 2P punish now. It's just a lot of good changes that make this character feel complete now, and that's how it should be. Anyways, that's it for now. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.